mothers are literally the worst parents on the entire planet. That's the first thing. And um, statistics back that. So 70, over 70% of young men that grow up under a single mother, single mother in particular, end up in prison. And because the reason why so many of us are messed up is because we were all, or most of us were raised by women, which are the worst parents on the entire planet, statistical wise. Oh boy, I don't know about y'all, but I am skeptical of a dude who is wearing janky ass transition sunglasses indoors while he says something as outrageous as single mothers are the worst parents on the planet. Without questioning, oh, I don't know, how women became single mothers in the first place, and also saying something like, that's just the fact, statistical wise. Not really inspiring a whole lot of confidence in the validity of his argument. But just in case you're not convinced that this isn't the biggest pile of horseshit, let me really take a moment to eviscerate this argument for all of you. So first, let's get into the basics before we even get to the numbers. I guarantee you that the type of dudes who go off about single mothers being terrible hold two core beliefs. The first is that women are responsible for getting themselves pregnant. And no, I'm not talking about immaculate conception, but I am talking about the misogynistic viewpoint that argues that women should be virginal or less free with their sexuality so that they wouldn't get themselves into this kind of situation in the first place. And the second is that women are responsible for not choosing a better partner with whom to procreate. Again, if they were more selective and less willing to sleep around than men, they would have a better chance of finding an upstanding gentleman with whom to parent. So what do these beliefs have in common? It's that they remove fathers from the equation entirely. There is no call for accountability for men who leave and the men that shirk responsibility for caring for their children. There is no recognition that it is men who create the condition of single motherhood. And because we've grown up in a patriarchal, sexist society that is rooted in the idea that child rearing is fundamentally the woman's sphere and that most women are to blame for men's bad behavior, that we are so quick to place the burden on single mothers here. It's why we more often say single mother instead of absent father or fatherless family. It's why a woman in Texas was indicted by a grand jury in the deaths of her two daughters because she let them get in the car with their father who later crashed and killed them and was found to be under the influence of alcohol. And it's automatically why we think every serial killer does what they do. Charles Manson's mom didn't love him enough, so he created a cult and went on a killing spree. No sympathy for Mommy Dearest, who was a 15-year-old child that got impregnated by a 24-year-old man who lied about being a colonel in the army and then said he had to leave for army business but never returned. And as for the arguments that this dude makes statistics-wise, uh, there are a few things to note here. Here. If we look at data from the Justice Department in their survey of inmates from federal and state correctional facilities, we'll find that 47% of convicted criminals report growing up in a single parent household, and 41% of them say they were raised solely by their mother. And that's a far cry from 70 plus percent. According to the US Census Bureau, there are over 13 and a half million single parents raising over 21 million children in this country. 80% of those parents are mothers. So because mothers are doing the majority of the child rearing, they're overrepresented when we try to study these patterns. Of course, there will be more children raised by single mothers who are convicted criminals because there are more children raised by single mothers, period. And if we look at results from longitudinal historical analyses, what we find is that a sizable portion for criminality can be attributed to other factors like low parent education, racial inequality, and poverty. Single moms are one of the most disadvantaged groups in the U.S. 30% live below the poverty line. You could also point out that 99% of criminals drank apple juice as a kid. But we wouldn't be up in arms about removing apple juice from kids' diets. Because apple juice doesn't have the same negative cultural narrative around it that single motherhood does. And we should note that not only do men like to peddle this narrative to serve their own ends and further misogyny, but Republican lawmakers and religious zealots love it too. Because it helps push GOP stories about welfare queens and restricting access to public safety nets to help maintain systemic racial inequality and feed the prison industrial complex. And it's let the nutty Christians talk about how the key to solving all problems is a return to traditional family values 
interviews where the woman stayed at home and the man was the breadwinner. And gay and trans people are either treated like criminals or animals or like they don't exist at all. So don't let people spouting this garbage go unchecked, y'all.